and she has a master's degree in English language and literature. She's an experienced teacher, having taught for 20 years, and she has trained more than 20,000 students. And as a prominent teacher, she has repeatedly won the title of excellent teacher and has written nearly um, 20 academic papers, teaching material, and she also published translation work. The main research interest is applied uh, linguistics and business English. Since February 2017, she has been appointed by Ministry of Education of China as the Chinese Director of Confucius Institute of Universitas Negeri Malang. And she's carrying out cross-cultural exchanges and promoting work cultural cooperation and harmony. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to Ms. Liao. Liao, time is yours. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Salamat sole. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's mm -hmm. so nice to attend this uh, lecture series. Since it's the third time I have been invite, uh, invited to attend such a series, for the last two times, we have talked about the cuisine in China, uh, we can say in China, and also the harmony in Chinese martial arts. So, and for the last two times, we just have the talk uh, in a way of face to face. But this time, we enjoy a new way that's online. In China, we usually say that now we are meeting on the ground, uh, crowd, okay? So just we are wandering and swimming among the crowd, okay? It's such a wonder, such a miracle, okay? So that's also the insight of my topic today, that's all roads lead to understanding, yeah? And then as we all know that different cultures will have different traditions and also different customers. And then the world is becoming smaller and smaller because of the development of the society. And nowadays, if we have chance, if we have enough money, we hope to enjoy a different life in other countries. And now today, I want to introduce some culture, some popular culture in China. And it's not only belong to China, it also belongs to the whole world because of a very special channel that is communication and also the roads or the roads. Now, let's start. Thank you. I need to my teacher. Okay, Ms. Liao, uh, you can click the share screen at the button, the button, share screen button at the button. Okay. If yeah, Ms. Yeah, yeah. Liao is at the Sasana Budaya, yeah, maybe one, some, one. yeah. Maybe someone from uh, HI, uh, kantor HI Sasana Budaya bisa membantu ya. Ada Luai di situ dan teman-teman. Iya Bu, ini masih kami carikan sebentar. Iya. Tunggu, tunggu. Don't worry, Ibu. It's all right. Ibu. Don't worry. Okay. Yay. Okay, yay. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Okay. Terima kasih. Yeah, okay. Now, firstly, I'd like to introduce myself. Maybe 
you know that Staya Dali Dunga, the People's Republic of China, and also a very beautiful city whose name is Guilin. And then Guilin is famous for its beautiful scenery. In China, and also in many places of the world, we usually say that east or west, Guilin's scenery is the best. Now, let's have uh, let's go to have a look at some of the beautiful sceneries. The first one can be regarded as the symbol of Guilin, that is the Li River. Okay, so you can find the shadow here, and this one is also a picture uh, on the, we can say, the money of Chinese renminbi. Okay, uh, that's this one, so this is, uh, and the Guilin scenery is uh, especially famous for its uh, water clean, uh, clean water you can find this one the water is very clean ah, okay and also and then this one is the green peaks so because the peaks is, are with many many green trees so we say they are green hills clean waters and also continue to yeah that's this one you can find the water very clean and also there's the uh, fishing eagle on the river and then usually the fishermen will use this bird to catch a fish and then it's a way of living and also uh, but nowadays we, we, we seldom use this one this one is just for performance because we want to protect the environment so this one is just uh, usually just for the performance if you want to have a visit along the Lee River, and maybe you can have a chance to uh, enjoy this performance, okay. And then that's the third characteristic of Guilin that we can say, grotesque cave. Because this one is a very famous cave in Guilin. The name is Red Fruit. Red Fruit is a kind of a special, uh, we can say plants. And then we can use the stem of these plants and then uh, to make the fruits. And then, and then these fruits can sing very, very wonderful music. Okay. And then this one is a four dimension, uh, we can say, video, uh, just in the cave. Okay. And also, this one is another symbol of Guilin City. That, uh, do you find that uh, this hill is just like an elephant, a very huge one? So this hill's name is Elephant Peak. And then, okay, so uh, if you mention Guilin, and if you know something about Guilin, and you, you can find that uh, Lee River and also Elephant Peak must be the symbol. Okay, and then continue to this one. And another also very wonderful, we can say, hill in Guilin and also the peak. This one is just look like a camel. And usually a very special animal just working along the desert. Okay, yeah, just like this one. But this one not working. Uh, this one just have a rest here. So because the scenery in Guilin so beautiful, it doesn't want to leave Guilin. So he just lie here, okay. And then this one is also a very special one. And usually you know that uh, the river, uh, usually maybe uh, some river will just uh, beside a city or around a city. But uh, this one is uh, a river inside the city. And then we call this one as the Liang River. And also we have two pagoda there. They just, they are just look like a chain one is the golden one, another one is the civil one. So it's, it's especially beautiful one, it is evening. If for the daytime, nothing special. So if you want to enjoy it, just go after the dark. And this one is, uh, we can say art park. And in this park, many artists from all over the world make their works there such like stature and the wood carting and also painting and even architecture, okay. 
And uh, this one is also a uh, very special, uh, we can say architecture just on the Lee River. Okay, this one is a, a bridge made of glass. And also, if you want to enjoy this one, also you have to enjoy this after the dark because with the lights, the bridge look magnificent and uh, we can say brightening. But see if uh, during the daytime, it's just uh, like a box, nothing special, okay? And then this one is, uh, we can say, branch of the Lee River, that is Peach River. And it's famous because of this flower, just the peach flower. And usually during the spring, and then the peach flower will blossom along this river. So if you travel along this river, and then you can find it's so beautiful, okay. So uh, this uh, place, uh, we can say China and Indonesia uh, be different from each other because as we all know that in Indonesia, there are only two seasons. One is the dry season, another one is the raining season. And the, the temperature all year along just nearly the same. But in Guilin, my hometown, we have four seasons, spring, uh, or the spring, uh, summer, autumn, and winter. And then the temperature will vary greatly. So uh, usually uh, people think that the spring is uh, the best season because it brings freshness and the livelihood to the world. But according to me, the best season in Guilin is the autumn. Why? Later, I will explain this one, okay. And then, okay, now, this is the scenery of the autumn in Guilin. And also, uh, can you find the beautiful girl here, the pretty girl? Uh, this girl is from one of the 55 minorities of China. Because in China, we have 55 minorities, and this one's name is Zhuang. Zhuang, uh, in English, maybe this one just means strong. Zhuang, ah, there is Zhuang. Okay, yeah, just like this one. And also the people of Zhuang minority can sing very beautiful uh, folk songs. And then usually they live in the mountaineers area. And then their song and their singing will linger there for many days. Okay, and then this one is just the uh, a harvest time in autumn, and then we can find that it's the rice field. Okay, that's nothing. Okay, yeah. And then also, uh, I just come from Guangxi Normal University. Okay, and this university is the place I get my bachelor's degree and my master's degree. And after that, I work as a teacher there. Okay. And the totally Guangxi Normal University has uh, three campus. campus. Uh, the first one is the Yansan campus. This one is the biggest one. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, and then there's the library of Guangxi Normal University. And uh, this library is uh, one of the biggest one in China. And also, and uh, this one, you know, also we have a river. Just, uh, around uh, our campus in Yansan, uh, Guangxi Normal University, okay. And also there's the stay, uh, okay, stadium in Guangxi Normal University. And uh, maybe you can find that uh, all these, uh, we can say, students, they have different justice. Yeah, that is every year we hold a sports meet and uh, now, all these students are from the international college. International college, they are foreign students. Okay, uh, some of them just from Indonesia and they are sent by Busabasa Mandalay, just Computer Institute, UN. And also, uh, this one is the second campus. We call this one as Wangcheng. Wangcheng just means the, uh, we can say city of the king. Uh, because 
This one belongs to one of the king in ancient times. And then you can find that uh, this gate, this main gate is quite similar to the one uh, just now we have saw in uh, Yan San Campus. Yeah, that's it. So this one is the oldest one. Uh, okay, yeah, one of the oldest uh, school, uh, the, we can say the university gates in China and the, the Yansan campus is a new one, so we just copy this one and made a new one. And also, all these are the international students. Last year, we took this uh, photo for them, okay? And this girl, uh, just the student from Pusabasa uh, Mandalin, just from UM, uh, this girl, okay? And also, uh, this one is the campus of uh, one some campus and uh, this girl maybe some of their uh, we can say teachers in um can recognize her because her father is their staff in Pumas um and also she is also the student of um and the student of Pusabasa mandalin and also this one is just a summer camp organized by Pusabasa Mandalin, uh, just the Confucius Institute uh, to Guangxi Normal University. Yeah, you can find this one. Okay. Yeah, if you are interested, maybe next time you can take this one to make a communication with Guangxi Normal University. Okay. And then the last campus of Guangxi Normal University, that is the Yu Tai campus, and also that also the main gates, yeah? and also there's the library there. Okay, and also this one, just the we can say the building for the international students, uh, for their study, and also we have the uh, we can say Indonesian Culture Center in Guangxi Normal University. You can find that so this one is the batik, that's right, yeah, okay. And also, we can find the national flag of Indonesia, yeah, so Indonesia la ya, yeah. Okay, and now, uh, yeah, well, we, I have talked a lot about myself and also about the city I am living and also about the university I have studied and worked that because I want to show you some way to understand me. Now, I want to show you more ways to understand each other and to understand China, the world, and also Indonesia, okay? And as you may know that culture is very important in every nation. And then we know that if you find this nation, is different from another one because only because these nations cultures are different such like for example uh, indonesian culture is different from chinese culture if we cannot find a specialty and the uniqueness of a culture we cannot recognize them and if we cannot recognize them we cannot understand them and if we cannot understand them, just means we cannot trust each other. But if we cannot trust each other, how can we become friends? Yeah, we want to live in a peaceful and a harmonious world. Just means we want to understand each other. Okay, yeah, so culture, is the characteristic and the knowledge of a particular group of uh, people. And then including its special language, for example, uh, uh, Indonesian language is quite different from Chinese language, Mandarin. Uh, for example, uh, in China, we say uh, Indonesia as in ni, and then in Indonesian, Bahasa Indonesia, we say Indonesia. Yeah, so quite different, okay. And that religion, for example, in Indonesia, we have many religions. And also in China, we also have many religions. But in Indonesia, uh, we can say the majority, uh, we can say the largest, the majority of religion is Islam. 
but in China, maybe no. Okay, maybe uh, some people believe in uh, Islam, some uh, believe in Buddhism, some believe in Christian. Yeah, different. Not uh, we we cannot say which religion uh, occupied the largest majority. No, no. Okay, and also cuisine. A uh, cuisine is quite a different. Okay, yeah. so uh, in Indonesian. And then also we have different cuisine. For example, in Java and also in Kalimantan, in Sumandala, and we have different cuisine. And in China, we also enjoy different one in the northern part, in the southern part, in the eastern part, in the western part, different one. Okay, and so, but we share something common. Uh, I have talked about this one. When I was uh, uh, invited to t attend this lecture series for the first time, uh, I, when I was talking about the Chinese cuisine, I mentioned just uh, uh, nasi goreng in Indonesia. We also have nasi goreng in China, but the name is not a nasi goreng. We call this one is Yangzhou uh, nasi goreng because Yangzhou is the name of a place. And that place is very famous for nasi goreng. And uh, but that nasi goreng is a little different from the nasi goreng in Indonesia, because uh, in China's nasi goreng usually we will put slice of uh, we can say sapi or babi into it. But in Indonesia, maybe we just put the egg. The X, so it's quite a different, okay. And also social habits, yeah, that's it. I found that's it. Indonesian people can be regarded as one of the the cleanest people in the world because they like to uh, clean them every day, many times, and also usually uh, we we can find that the a kind of fragrance on on their body. So that's the reason I like to have a close touch with them. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, in some other places, maybe not so, okay, yeah. And also for the music and the arts, different cultures will have different. It's quite, a, it's quite uh, uh, we can say, understandable. Just now, uh, we, we just listened to a professor from Korea and also the music there, of course, different from the music in Indonesia, and also uh, we can say uh, different from the music in China. But as we all know that all the things in the world, we can say the sameness, uh, we can say will pre prevail over difference. So uh, it's better to, uh, we can say, respect differences, and also try to share the commonness. Yeah, that's it. Okay. And then uh, if we want to know or know about the culture of one nation or one country, and then the best way is communication. And then you should know that communication just two way. Yeah, okay, yeah. So uh, the goal or the purpose of communication is to reach mutual understanding. And then for example, if you want to get something, if you want to know something, and then you have to get a communication. For example, uh, as we all know that uh, in Islam, and then uh, we, we have an old saying just uh, China. Okay, so if you want to learn something, just go to China. Okay, we will say in this one. And then uh, for those people who read this sentence, maybe they are curious. Why, if I want to learn something, I have to go to China? And then what's the attractiveness of China? And then I want to get some understanding of this one. And then if I want to get some understanding of China, just means I have to get some communication. Yeah, that's it. Uh, for example, and also one more example in China, and then 
uh, for most of the uh, people who believe in Buddhism, and then they will say that if you find you if you want to find a better life, you'd better to look for the Western paradise. Okay, so many people will wonder where Western paradise is, uh, and then. Uh, according to the, we can say, uh, the legends, maybe the Western paradise lies in India. And then people will wonder, oh, why India is such a place uh, which can be called as the Western paradise? I want to know. If you want to know, just means you want to get uh, an understanding. And if you want to get an understanding, you have to make some communication. Why? Because you cannot get all this by your imagination. You have to get this by some channel, by some roads. The roads? Where are the roads? I will show you the roads. Okay, now let's come to the roads to understand it. Yeah. And before we come to look at these roads, uh, let's just try to find something very interesting. And then, usually, some roads will be found by yourself. But sometimes, the roads uh, will come to you directly and also maybe under your consciousness. So we say subconsciously. Why? Because the information in our life. Uh, we can say can be divided into two types. One is the active information. The second one is the passive information. The active information just refer to those information you actively want to get, want to find, or uh, you actively search for. Uh, just like the one we are talking about just now, for example, you want to know why China or India are so attractive. And then you want to look for it online. You want to look for it, uh, we can say, from the library. You want to look for this uh, from some stories. And then this one is active one. Okay. And the second one is the passive one. That's uh, maybe sometimes you just get the info. Uh, unconsciously, okay, or subconsciously. For example, uh, every day when we are working along the streets, or if we work just or we wandering, uh, we are wandering uh, around a uh, moor, such like uh, uh, Mados, or um, we can say MOG. And then, and then also, there are so many. Uh, we can say advertisements there, and also sometimes we can find that uh, we can some find some posters and also even some videos. And then, actually, you don't pay attention to it, but they will appear before you. If you take a look at it, even a very short glimpse you can get some idea or image or an impression. And maybe later you get this idea, image or impression again and again. Even though it is passively, you will get a deeper impression. Maybe sometimes, maybe later you find that, oh, it's so useful. It's so attractive. I want to get it more. And then the passive information will become an active one. Yeah, that's it. And later, we will have more examples of them. Okay. And then uh, for nowadays and also highly developed society, if you want to get a better understanding of one culture, Usually, we just the most useful way we call this one is the mass culture or 
just now. We also, also we call this one as the popular culture. Ah, okay. Why it's so popular? Because also in China we call this one is the hot culture. Ah, just like the professor just now talking about the uh, K wave. Oh, why K wave so popular, so hot? Yeah, because it belongs to the mass culture. Mass, mass just means of large numbers. Okay, yeah, just like this one. And also, this one is a daily form. Just you have a lot of chance to encounter it. And also, we can have a lot of means, uh, mass mediums to get to know it. Okay, so uh, this one is sometimes we can say different from the traditional culture. Because some traditional moral culture cannot be regarded as the uh, mass culture or popular culture. We even call some as the cold culture. For example, in China, we have some cold culture, uh, such like we can say uh, a kind of handcraft. And then maybe if you want to make this handcraft, it's difficult to do that because only a very small number of person have the skill to do that. But this one cannot be given up by the society. It should be passed on from this generation to another generation. So such kind of culture, we, we call that one as the cold culture. And the mass culture is the popular and the whole culture. It's every day you have to take this one. For example, as we all know that everyone has a mobile phone. And then uh, in China, we usually say that to lose my money, no problem. To lose my key, no problem. But if lose my mobile phone, my life come to an end. So, um, and then, uh, in English, as you may know, that uh, an apple a day, uh, okay, can, uh, we can say kill everything. And also for French people, they usually say, a day without uh, cheese is no day at all. And now we usually say that a day without a mobile phone is no day at all. Okay, yeah, that's this one. So why? Because mobile, profi uh, mobile phone, provide a channel, a way of understanding of mass culture to us. So we cannot live without it. Okay, ah, just like this one. And then also, uh, the media or the roads to, we can say, uh, to get understanding. And then can be, we can say, uh, regarded as the following ways. Okay, it's not the whole. Uh, it's just some, and then maybe the, the uh, we can say the most accessible one, or maybe the easiest way to get also the, the most common one. Yeah, okay. Uh, such like we can see the books and the magazines or the newspapers, such like this one. Okay, and then Let's come to look at the examples. Maybe you can have a better understanding of this one. Uh, firstly, for the books and the textbooks. Uh, in China, and then all the students have to study geography when they are very young, just uh, from the, we can say, uh, just like the students in Indonesia, just the primary school. Yeah, from primary school, you have to uh, get to know some geography. And the first of all, just the uh, home geography. And the later, just the international geography. Uh, okay, and then if we get to know geography, we know something. For example, uh, in China, we have an old saying just, if you are not good, we will throw you to uh, Island Java. So while I was a little girl, I just uh, got to know this one, but I did not know, okay, did not know where Java is. Now, I am in Java now, but in the past, I did not know. And then, where can I get to know? 
about Java just from the textbook of geography, and we have a better understanding. And also from the textbook of history. Okay, so in China, we have the, we can say also, we should have the history courses when we were primary school students, just the, uh, the pupil. And then the, uh, we can say the, uh, <clears throat> junior student, junior school students, and the senior high school students. Okay, so we have to learn this one. And even we are students of the college of the university, we have to study geography, history. And from these two, uh, we, we can get to know something about this one. For example, just uh, when I was a student of uh, senior high school, I just get to know the name of Samalang in Indonesia. Uh, because in the history textbook, we are talking about Zheng Ho. Yeah, just some bomb. Okay. Uh, and then also, and then he had been to Indonesia. Uh, okay. So, and then in Samalang, and there is a temple uh, memorizing him. And then we just get to know this one from the textbook. And also the textbooks and also and the books also include the art books. Okay, such like also such like in fashion books. For example, uh, in China, we only we can buy some fashion books and then and such like a Vogue. And also if you got this one and then you are interested in the fashion there, maybe you want to get something about the European countries. And also we have the other books regarding to the, uh, we can say Southeast country, uh, Southeast Asian countries. And then we, 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 if we have a look at this one, and then maybe we can get something about the Southeast Asian countries, such like Thailand, uh, Vietnam, and also uh, Burma, and also Laos, and the Philippines, and also Indonesia. Yeah, just like this one. And also the last one, and it also maybe one of the, uh, we can say the commonest one. And it's for me, I like traveling. So every time when I make travels, and then I, I will have a good look at the brochures on the flight. Because, and also on the flights or on the, we can say, waiting long uh, at the airport. Because they will introduce a lot about the local culture. It's a very useful uh, means or road to get information. Okay, yeah, so you know this one. And also, uh, the second way to get to you know the, uh, we can say, to get some understanding of other culture. Uh, and let's take some, or we can say example, just uh, for the Chinese people to get to know the culture of Indonesia. Uh, and you, you are quite familiar with this song, that's why. The first one is Ayomama. And then in China, we also just translated this one directly as Ayomama. Okay, this one is a very common and a familiar song in China. So if we want to say something, about uh, uh, Indonesia, and then, okay, and then uh, they will sing this song. Yeah, okay, very interesting. Okay, so most of the Chinese people can sing this song. Hey, yo, mama, you will go to your son, see? Yeah, just like this one. And also the Binga Wang solo. Okay, and this one is also a very beautiful song. And this one, uh, Firstly, I did not recognize this one is a, uh, uh, we can say, very interesting song. Uh, because this one, uh, I, uh, I, I just got to know this song in China. And we know this one. But when I arrived in Indonesia, <clears throat> I found that this one is also an Indonesian song. It's so, oh, we can say, surprising. And also this one, Sa Yang. And this one is a very famous song sung by a Taiwanese singer. Okay, yeah. So maybe you can have a better understanding from some very popular music. And also, yeah, also TV dramas. Okay, just now, 
uh, the professor from Korea also mentioned something about this one. And uh, in China, we also can look at some very interesting uh, we can say journalists. And also now, this one is uh, we can say <coughs> is uh, we can say TV series uh, in China, and the name is uh, we can say for instance. Sorry, yeah, don't do that. Okay, now uh, this one, the little uh, Nyon Yang. Okay, so because of this, uh, we can say, of this uh, TV drama, and the many Chinese people are interested in the traditional Indonesian, just that uh, uh, we can say goodbye. Yeah. Okay, yeah, very wonderful one. And also, some of the, we can say, the TV dramas can be enjoying Indonesia. Uh, to get the uh, understanding of uh, the Chinese culture, such like the Meadow Garden, the Flames Doctor, and also Detective Bell. Uh, okay, <clears throat> just like this one. Okay, so from the ancient time and also up to the modern time, you can have a better understanding. Okay, and the next one just from the movies, and then. For the movies, and, and then maybe one of the most popular one, for example, the, we can say, you are quite familiar with this movie, Alanda. And also some of our Indonesian students also get this name as their name, Avanda. And then that's the Avanda in the movie, but that's the real view of uh, the place. This one place is a very famous place in uh, China, whose name is Dang Jia Jie. Okay, so it's the original uh, OKC model of Avenda. And also, uh, this uh, uh, we can say a film, a Chinese film. From this film, the Chinese people get a chance to know more about Indonesia. In the past, when we are talking about Indonesia, we, 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 for Chinese people, we, we just know Jakarta and also Bali, no more. But from this movie, <coughs> we know another place. That's this one. Manato. Yeah, that's this one. Ah, uh, this is a view from the movie. Ah, uh, okay. And also, this one is, uh, we can say, a movie be, uh, made by an American writer, just uh, James Hilton's Lost the Horizon. And then this uh, is a very old movie. And with this movie, ah, uh, okay, The Lost the Horizon. And then people get to know this place, this place. And then it's uh, regarded as, uh, we can say, Eden, uh, Garden Eden of the world. This one is Shangri-La, Shangri-La. Yeah, okay. So firstly, Shangri-La just come from this movie, okay? And also, this one is a very famous, we can say, Kung Fu Sta and Danny Yen, okay? And also this one is, uh, uh, we can say cartoon, a uh, cartoon movie. Okay, just about a very wonderful baby, uh, we can say wonderful mask. Okay, a mask deal. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> just like this one. And also, and this one let a bullet fly. Okay, and uh, these three stars are very famous movie stars in China. Okay. And also, and then, uh, another way to get, uh, get understanding of uh, other culture that should be advertisement. For example, uh, yeah, this one, I just take the picture from uh, MOG in Malang. So it's, uh, uh, we can say, in Minnesota there. And also in the Minnesota, there is an uh, advertisement. And the only advertisement, these two stars are from China, are from China. So maybe some people will be interested in who they are. I want you to know. Yeah, and then if you want to know who they are, and then you can know something about China. And also, yeah, 
you are quite familiar this with this uh, maybe this phone that's uh, oppo and then of course all these two stars are from indonesia so for indonesian people they are quite familiar with the star and then they if they want to buy this phone and they, they have to know something about oppo and if they know something about oppo this means they know something about china so some kind of understanding realized and then also another way to get an understanding of or we can say a culture and maybe we can from the internet such like google search and also in china we use by do search and also we can use some browsers and okay yeah, just like this one and also uh, maybe the most expensive one just to travel around the world okay uh, so you can travel uh, just at home and then to get to know something for example after i arrived in indonesia i just made some travel around the indonesia i have been to Medan, jakarta uh, okay mm, bali okay and also uh, lomba yeah and also sulabaya and also madula and also uh, badu uh, jamba majogado is such like this one okay uh, so if i have been to some places i i can get some very special understanding of this one and also another one is just to travel uh to some foreign countries for example one day uh if possible welcome you to visit china ah uh, i will be very happy to host you okay and then also also some other way and then maybe we can get an understanding of love from some very special institutions and such kind of institutions the first one is the museum uh, okay so in china we have a saying that uh, if you have a better understanding of other nation the first thing you should do when you arrive at a new place is to visit the museum there after you visit the museum and you can have a, a a little or a better or more understanding of something for example i have been to solo and the first day i arrived in solo i just went to the uh batik music uh, museum there okay it's a very special experience for me okay and also some other institutions such like the confucius institution just the institution i am working now uh, in indonesia we call them as busabasa mandalin okay and also uh, another one is the gother institute this one is uh, we can say founded in germany and i know that in um we also have the uh, professors sent by the gothic institute to the Faculty Fakala at UM, yeah, and also aliens from France. Ah, just okay. If you want to learn something about France, uh, if you learn something uh, from, uh, we can say something about uh, French culture, uh, you can search this one. Uh, also, you can get some help from uh, Mast Namban from Hai. Yeah, this is okay at um okay now uh, you can have a we can say look at uh, okay busabasa mandalin here yeah that's our main gate okay and also uh, uh that's our name busabasa mandalin university snorkeli malang and also that's my office and also we have the classroom here and also inside the, the office and then uh, this baba uh, this gentleman is the chinese ambassador yeah in indonesia he visited the busapasa mandalin last year okay and also there the students from uh, sma nulua jati Blobolingo. Yeah, they have a culture 
experience camp in Busan Bahasa Mandalay. So if you are interested, just come here. I will show you the way to understand in many ways as you like. Okay, now uh, that's the photo one we went to Brobolingo to visit SMA Nulor Jadi. Okay, so yeah, from this, I just uh, have a very short, uh, brief introduction about the ways to get to know each other, to get to know the culture of the other countries. So if you are interested, welcome to Busabasa Mandali, welcome to China. We can show you many ways. Also, I'm interested in Indonesia, I'm, in the, I'm interested in other countries. If you can, please share the ways with me. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. Okay, terima kasih, Ms. Liao. Thank you very much for the enlightening presentation about cross-cultural understanding. Okay, so I hope that you can learn a lot from uh, the presentation. Now it's time for question and answer. Professor um, Liao, Ms. Liao will answer your questions. Okay, anyone like to answer questions? To, to, uh, to ask questions? Okay. Uh, there's a comment from whoever here. Yeah. So um, here in Indonesia, yeah, Indonesians also include China in its popular culture, not just the Korean, Korean, the K-pop. Um, you know that there are a lot of a lot of uh, Chinese character, Chinese movies in Indonesia, including the current trend of film Islami. Now we have we have a, an Islamic film here entitled Assalamualaikum Beiji. Now, what do you think about it? I think every culture has their specialties. So uh, we should respect each other and also enjoy each other. Okay, yeah. Uh, maybe sometimes uh, we cannot understand why their culture is so so and why their culture is so so. But you should know that every culture, if they exist, there should be some necessity of its existence. So in China, we usually say, if it can exist, it must be a good thing. Yeah, that's this one. So I think that, for example, some of our Busabata's Basa uh, Mandarin students one day went to China and then someday, one day, uh, just work along the streets of Guilin City. And there, a Chinese little girl asked them, okay, uh, Mba, do you feel hot when you with the cover? And then the student just called me. Oh, Lao Shi, why they ask me such a question? They do not be friendly to me. And then I tell her, no. Just because of friendliness, they ask such a question to you. Why? Because they want to know you. They want to understand you. If they want to understand you, it just means they want to treat you as a friend. Because we are different. So we want to know. If you tell them that uh, because my country think this one very beautiful, we think this one is a good way to be a symbol of Indonesia, such like this way. I think they can understand. So, uh, also another thing, just like the same. Uh, when I first arrived here, some people asked me, Buana, why did not your husband go here together with you? Because the ex, or we can say director, came here together with her husband. So they wonder why I came here alone, not together with my husband. And I tell them that my husband also has a work. We too have our individual 
social responsibilities. So he has to keep to his work and I have to keep to my work. I hope you can understand. I'm not the affiliate of my husband and he is not my affiliate either. So we are independent one. Yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you, Ms. Liao. Uh, do you have any suggestions on how to incorporate cultures in the teaching of language? Oh, I think language is the first step to uh, understand their uh, culture or maybe to promote our culture. And the second one, and also we should have many other ways such like uh, with the help of language and we can uh, also get help from some other media uh, such like we can say just now we have mentioned some movies, some advertisement and also some TV series and even with the help of newspapers, magazines and also Maybe the diplomatic relations between different countries. As we all know, last week, uh, Baba Luhut went to China. I just have a talk with the uh, Prime Minister of China, uh, Baba Wang, about uh, the, we can say, the vaccine of the coronavirus 19. Okay, so uh, with this, uh, we can say the diplomatic discussions and also meetings and uh, the people in different countries will have a better understanding of the relations between these two countries. And if the relations between the two countries better, and I think that the culture will be more easy to get to, get to each other. For example, and also, of course, we should promote some, uh, we should say the good culture, for example, uh, every time when I went back to China uh, and then uh, my university will ask me to make some introduction of their Indonesian culture. And every time I will tell them that I found that Indonesia is a very clean country, especially the, we can say, the toilets uh, in Indonesia. China never can compare with it because because we do not have, a, we can say, proper attitude to clean the toilet. Yeah, I think that the Indonesian people, when they clean toilets, they just clean this one as a part of their life practice. Yeah, they think that this one clean, and my mind clean, and my belief clean. But in China, we never say so. So I, I think this one, we should have a better understanding. And also, and also I think that the, the service in Indonesia is much more better than that in China. So in Indonesia, no matter where I have been, okay, if I want to get a service, people are so kind, uh, so kind. But in China, most of the, Waiters and witches, sometimes they are very cold. Uh, if not cold, they are, they can, they are indifferent. And then, so I think that if we want to um, promote the, the good, the culture, we should promote the good one. And also, and it also, not only through the government, and also should by the ordinary people. Yeah. So everyone, we should work together. We should combine together to do so. The government do this one. The ordinary people do this one. And also all the institutions, if possible, will also do this one together. Okay, thank you. Uh, so next question is from, um, it is about, uh, it's quite a controversial question. Actually, and um, it's asking about the movie Mulan, yeah, that now has become a controversy in China. Yeah. yeah. 
sorry about this. Have you heard about the recent EAQ regarding the Mulan live action movie? What do you think about the controversy that occurred in China about the live action movie? What do you think about these issues? Oh. Uh, sometimes we should think that the... the um, We should say drama is drama and movie is movie. Even sometimes we can say that the movie or drama can be regarded as some representation, a representation of the real life, but they are only representation. They are not the real life. So we just appreciate it, enjoy it. That's okay but should not put ourselves into the, uh, we can say, the movie. In China, uh, we can say, sometime uh, for some certain period of time, uh, the medieval garden cannot be put on because the may seem not so correct. Just means that every person should enjoy the rich life and the, if you are rich, uh, you can be absent from school. Uh, you can enjoy a very luxurious life and then you, sh you can ignore others' feelings. It cannot be so. And uh, as we all know that, uh, according to the gods, the God usually say, all men are created equal. Maybe now you are rich, I'm poor, but for personality and also for the owner, we are equal. So if we have a look at this one, for me, uh, uh, it, it, usually if I watch movies, I watch dramas, I just have a look at the beautiful fashion, also maybe have their, we can say, making art, just like this one. But uh, for the same, if no good one, I will write down something and then tell me, don't do that, it's not so good. And then also, well, I am a, stu I am a teacher, so when I give lectures to my students, I usually take this movies or drama as example, ex example to my students. I just tell them, if you have a look at this one, you should know, ah, in this movie or the, in this drama, what is good? and what is bad, and what can we learn from this one? Uh, if you can, and then some, sometimes my student will ask me that, uh, 老师, I cannot find anything in this one. And then I said, just have a look. That's okay, no more. Uh, if you cannot find anything, just have a look. Okay, just have a look, not to have a watch. Not just like this one. Okay, just watch and enjoy then. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Okay, let's come to the next question. Uh, yeah. from Nur Afifa Harustan. Mm -hmm. What is the most distinctive culture of China from any other culture around the world? It could be verbal or non verbal communication or anything. So yeah, what is the uniqueness? What is the distinctive one from China? Uh, for Chinese people, I think the most prominent uh, characteristics or traits, I think, should be uh, abandons. Abandons. So, so we, 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 we like to obey orders. So we usually follow the instruction. Uh, maybe sometimes not so willingly, but at first we should follow. That's it. Uh, for example, we just take the coronavirus 19 as an example. As uh, maybe most of the world know that, uh, uh, firstly, it, break, uh, it broke out in China. And then uh, we, we just make an uh, enclosure of the city, Wuhan. Okay. And then it's very easy to do that in China. For example, government order that uh, you should stay at home don't move around and then the city should be closed down and then we just do that so 
Even though we feel very boring, we feel very tired, we feel unwilling to do so, but we know that it's for our sake. So we stay at home. And then you, you cannot imagine how it's uh, how serious it will be in China. For example, uh, because when it break out, uh, when the coronavirus broke out in China, it's just during the spring festival of China. The spring festival is just like the it do fitly, yeah, Hari Raya it do fitly. Yeah, okay, in Indonesia, so it's the most important festival in China. Just the, uh, every family. Uh, the older family members will try to get back to their home and have a family gathering. But because of this, uh, we can say virus and the government uh, issue an order that you should stay at a home or you stay where you are working, don't move. And then we just stay where we work. Okay, and then every day, every family can send only one member to buy something for your family, only one member. And then everyone will take her car, one member. And then, okay, if only one member, and then, and also after you come back from the supermarket, you have to have where we can say cleaning and also sanitary, sanitizing. And then before you go back to your home. And when you go back to your home, you have to stay at a, a single room by yourself. You cannot live together with your family member all day long because today you go out. Just like this one. So uh, we usually say maybe Chinese people, uh, sometimes we think they are, we, we, we are so abandoned. Uh, we, we, in Chinese, we call this one as the Qinghua. Qinghua just means follow instructions. We like to follow instructions. And usually when we were little child, uh, okay, if we praise somebody, we usually say, you are so abandoned. Mm. Okay, that's this one. Uh, it, it's quite a special, uh, okay. And then in Indonesia, <laughs> I do not think you are, uh, we can say abandoned. You, you, you have more, uh, we can say idea of your own. Okay, uh, just like this one. And then so we, we belong to different one. We, we cannot say abandoned is better than we can say freedom or freedom is uh, better than abandoned because different country will have different situation. Uh, okay, yeah, just like this one. Okay, thanks. Again, the next question is from, uh, again, from Nadia Maula. What do you think is the most common popular and suitable medium to understand foreign culture, especially uh, for young people? Mm, I think it's better from some documentary movies. Not the drama, but documentary movies for me and for my children. So every day, if we have a chance or if we have time to watch TV, usually we just choose it documentary one uh, some documentary movies uh, from BBC or from uh, we can say uh, Chinese uh, other countries uh, for example last year we just uh, watch uh, documentary movies about the uh, we can say still road countries still road countries and also in this one I have a better understanding of the city uh, Samalang, Sulabaya, and also Madula. Uh, okay, and yeah, because of this one. So, and uh, uh, I think that usually documentary movies, uh, they are quite objective. Yeah, quite a, without prejudice to anyone, to anything, just like this one. And also maybe some history books. Yeah, some history books. Yeah, okay. Uh, if for the TV place, okay, uh, just enjoying, okay, enjoying, but for knowledge, I do not say so, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, sometimes uh, there are misunderstandings between 
cultures. Uh, how do you think this misunderstanding can be clear or erased? Yeah, this is the question from Nadia again. Yeah. Misunderstanding is quite normal and it's quite uh, frequent. I can understand that. Uh, for example, uh, uh, before I went to Indonesia and they tell me that uh, if you go to a country with a lot of Muslims, you should take care of yourself because they have a such a lot of um, customs maybe you cannot understand yeah so they just tell me so so before i went here i i should say i make a lot of preparation uh, even i made a lot of preparation <coughs> after i arrived here i found that i made a, some understanding a misunderstanding of the indonesian people uh, firstly, uh, I think you like to have uh, well sleepers, that's why. So I don't think you, you don't pay attention to me because every time you just so formally, but on your food, you just sleep. But later I know that it's not disrespect or uh, we can say contempt of me. It's just uh, a, a, a tradition of Indonesian people, you like to have the slippers just like this one. So I think if you want to uh, get rid of or bridge the gap of the misunderstanding, firstly, you should actively, not passively, actively get information of the other, uh, we can say the other culture. And the second one, if possible, just have a close contact with them yeah uh, in the past we say that seeing is believing but nowadays i think that seeing is not only uh, the uh, is not the only way to lead to believing if you want to make believing or understanding or to bridge the gap of uh, misunderstanding it's better to have a uh, close contact and uh, uh, with each other. In China, we usually say that a long time will test your friendship. So with enough time, I think any misunderstanding can be get rid of. And we should get rid of it actively. That's the most important thing. If you do not want to actively get rid of it, you never can get rid of it. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Danielle, I think that has uh, some up uh, uh, questions about about uh, how to increase, yeah, how to promote cross-cultural understanding between a different culture such as Indonesia and China. I cannot okay. hear you. Well, um, well, this is the question and answer session. This is the question. Uh, this is the end of the question and answer session. I'm sorry that we have to end our discussion because time is up. But before we close the discussion, um, Miss Liao, yeah. would you like to give some concluding remarks? Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, everyone, it's really a great pleasure and honor for me to attend this lecture series. This is the third time I have been invited to attend this series and maybe the last because next year, uh, I will finish my term and uh, we'll go back to my hometown. Uh, it's, uh, maybe it's one of the biggest gifts I have got in Indonesia. It's also a way for me to get a better understanding of the people, not only in Indonesia, but also in some other Asian countries because 
uh, from the first time and up to now, I have listened to the lectures from uh, Korean, the Philippines, and also from uh, and also from uh, the 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 the, uh, the Japanese uh, Japan, okay, and also from uh, Indonesia lectures, okay. So it's also a good way to get uh, we can say understanding from each other. So I think after this lecture, I have to put this one into my uh, okay topic. That another way is to join the international lecture series. And I hope next time, if possible, uh, I'll hope to meet you again. And also, just like the, the words I have said before, if you are interested in Chinese culture, if you want to bridge the gap of the misunderstanding between Indonesian culture and the Chinese culture, just come to Busabasa Mandalin. Just come to China. Welcome. Selamat datang. Terima kasih, Pania. Okay, terima kasih, Bu Ana, or Miss Liao, for the amazing presentations. Let's give a round of applause for Miss Liao. Okay, please click the uh, clapping hand uh, icon. Yeah, thank you very much. We hope that uh, Indonesia and China will be great friends forever and ever. Okay. Yeah. We'll of you. course. Yeah. yeah. And we hope that we someday we could visit you in China. Yeah. Okay. In China. Welcome. We'll yeah. Here. Yeah. All right. Before we uh, before the closing, now let's uh, everyone please turn on your camera. Let's have a photo session. Okay. Sasha, now turn on your camera, please. Yeah. Now let's have a photo session with Miss Liao. It will be a memento for her when she leaves Indonesia. So she will keep us in her memory. Yeah. Okay, smile to the camera, please. The first page. Masaji, please. Are you ready? One, two, three, smile, say cheese. Okay, the next page, please. Okay, the next. Okay, all right, okay. So that's it. So this concludes our lecture series for this week. Thank you to all participants for attending. We hope that you have learned a lot and enjoyed the presentation and learned a lot, uh, learned a lot about cultures and how to bridge the gap between cultures. Okay, thank you very much and see you again in the coming reels. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Bye.